Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Inevitably, when um, I tell people what I do for a living, um, people will say to me, politics, sports, I mean, it's it's incredible. You guys probably get the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. People are aware that you do that. And I say, really, not much of uh, either, but occasionally we talk about it. And I believe that I have uh, modified my take on how I cover it. I haven't mo- modified my politics, but I, I have modified my take on how I discuss politics. And what I want to talk about right here is a dramatic... Uh, a dramatic turn from the way I used to talk about it. And let me explain it to you this way. I was very, very active politically growing up. I have, uh, I've been a Democrat for most of my life, and I've always been uh, delighted, maybe because of my Irish heritage, to get into the fray. We love, my people love to talk politics. So I, sure. I've well, been you into also it come from years. a political family. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Uh, but that's not, that, that's, this is, this tradecraft is in your DNA. Yeah. Is Teddy still in power? <laughs> no. Oh. Teddy's, Teddy's last guy. I'm Bad sorry. dude. Sorry about uh, that. So, uh, but anyway, but that's a long time ago. And it, was the, it, it, no. it didn't have anything to do with Teddy. <laughs> so, uh, the thing about it is, um, the, the thing that I have become more and more aware of is in general, the the BS, and I call out both sides on uh, their BS, and I want to talk to you guys about this because it's a big story that's getting lots of uh, buzz because of the principles uh, that are involved, and mm. the story goes like this. And before I start it, because I don't want people like turning off their uh, yeah, devices you, you that basically are on just a certain about to Before do a I start, whole I'm, you're going to be politics. surprised at the perspective I come from on this. All, all right? right. So the story goes as follows: Donald Trump is, uh, and the Donald Trump people are melting down because of the Taylor Swifties out there. And I cry BS with a capital B. All right. I don't think that that I'd like to know if you're going to tell me that this is a big story and that Donald Trump is really, really freaked out about Taylor Swift and uh, Swift and her Swifties. You're going to have to provide me with some real evidence of that as much as I would love. To take more shots. Oh, I haven't at even the, heard the story. At the narcissistic. Yeah. Uh, the story goes that there is incredible Taylor Swift backlash because of her politics. Now, I don't buy it. See, I but who's reporting it. this? Uh, well, I, I'll give you a great example of where I heard it today was on yeah. a major television network that skews left. Begins with an M uh, and ends with a C. And okay. then I heard it on uh, another one that begins with a C and ends with an N. Yeah. And, I see. Uh, I was watching CNBC. And, and then I, I saw it on my local news. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- and, and this yeah. is like, this is when I begin to think about, okay, we're creating controversy that involves uh, pretty much our two most well-known American celebrities. Donald Trump and Taylor Swift. Oh, you Swift. mean they're, we're being manipulated into I, the Oscar, I can't give you cycle. evidence, but I no, always I, this is, fear this is probable. being manipulated yeah, by I, But there's people. Okay, can we do can we do a a very and this is going to be boring or partisan, but these are what I understand to be true and you mm-hmm. tell me if they're I'm yeah, because right. I think I can help a little bit, okay. but I don't even know what her Taylor Swift thing. has I know not she's endorsed urging people to vote, right? She, yeah, but she's not endorsed a candidate. Corre- as correctly, of today. that's the way I understand right. it. Don't know whether that's true. Um, the majority of her can- of her fan base seems to be uh, female, right? right? Uh, there is that fan base. Um, I don't know if half of them or the majority of them are sub voting. Um, yeah. 
you know. Jimmy Kimmel, I heard a clip from his show this talking is about true. the 11-year-old. The Swifties and their 11-year-old. Yeah. Uh, she's urging all her 11-year-old fans to get out and vote. Yeah. Kimmel, yeah. of course, has great writers, and I don't. So Traditionally, uh, top 40, as is just general or pop music, has uh, a demographic of tweens to yes. um, you know maybe early 30s at, right. at the latest mark, to maybe to 34. That demographic does not vote at a high <laughs> click. They don't. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you saw this headline, it's BS. Well, no, but they're saying that she will mobilize now, women uh, will vote people. for their reproductive rights right. all day. Yeah. But the thing about this, this is where I feel played. I think that this is absolutely do- – look, I, I prepare shows on, a, yes. on, a, on this level. I know how I do it, and I know how my thought process works. And my thought process works where, oh, this is something people people are talking about. You always do. That's the yeah. lens. I, that I you, don't, That's the I'm lens that media is created through. This, L- lens. This world. The, the lens of media is created through a le- the, the lens that we use is what will be something that will be salacious. Salacious. No, more like compelling, or what or if, will, yeah. will resonate with an audience. And what that's if it? To, what if? Tomorrow, yeah, you see an ad or maybe a headline that says the double Big Mac, Donald Trump's new favorite burger. Now, is he marrying yeah, you, himself? You're aware also that I caught crap from certain people about that. Oh no, I have no idea what. Yeah, hmm. about, the backlash about, about uh, apparently my disdain for Jersey Mike's. Based on the shredded lettuce, which was not disdain. I was talking about shredded lettuce. You said you don't like shredded about lettuce. Jersey Mike's. Right. You, you said nothing terrible about Je- Jersey Mike's. I didn't Mike's. say and anything. And by the way, the only person Jersey that's ever Mike's. said anything terrible about it is Rob. Well, yeah, but it's just that was you had a staffing. terrible experience. I yes. did. Yeah. Well, she cut her finger on the slicer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's a great, you got red lettuce. great sub yeah. shop. <laughs> it's yeah, really, well, it's, the, a, it's as overpriced. As far as a chain, yeah, it's yeah, overpriced. So getting back to the the whole Swifty thing, I didn't know there was a Jersey Mike's backlash. Your your uh, your producers of your media outlets are yeah. gonna get what sizzles, and it doesn't have to have any factual backing whatsoever when you talk about. Uh, you can look at a few tweets and you can look at a few lines on social media and say, there is a backlash. I, I cry complete BS. You know when I'll say it's real? Hmm. I'll say it's real when Donald Trump goes out uh, to one of his campaign rallies and slams Taylor Swift. Then I'll and think it's it. real. The majority of your career, you broadcasted to, and I hate the term, but in a really eclectic melting pot that was not representative of the rest of the country. It's just, just a, it's not. It's, it's a unique. The DMV uh, is unique to the world. I, but I also, st- I also love like I wasn't politically active. You know that. Mm-hmm. And then during the pandemic, m- my eyes opened up to say, "Whoa!" Like this, everything does matter. It does matter, and this is why it matters. Yeah. You're talking about uh, people dying, right? As yeah, as, well, uh, the you know, government being able to, yeah. uh, you know, making it a political issue was kind of uh, scary. But, but we're on the <laughs> same political side, right? I don't even know if we are, to be honest. Oh, God. I don't think my politics and, and in your politics, I don't think I've done a deep dive with anybody on the show about how I feel. I'm a Democrat. Personally. I support uh, the Lincoln Project on a regular basis, and I'm now, proud to say they are all that. Republicans. They are, they are anti-Trump. <laughs> Yes. And they, they, they are, are never uh, Trumpers. Some of them have left the party. Most some of them, them have left the party. Right. I think all of them have left the party. Right. And now they are registered Democrats. Right. So like that's where my my politics stand. I have no no problem saying that that I'm proud of where I stand. Uh, you know, I, if there was a party for the capitalists, I'd probably be there. Well, prior I don't think you should there. be talking about that because I think it drives listeners away. We have to well, take a break. These are facts. No, that's it. Uh, we well, have Mike, to. Well, Mike, there is okay one. Break. There is one takeaway from all of this, and I see what? validity on both sides. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. All Time. right. Perfect. <laughs> that was in a good move, I think. All right. We'll take a break and uh, we'll come back to the round. This portion of the program is brought to you by Caden Lane. Discovering quality kids' clothes just got easier. Say goodbye to the struggle of finding a place where high quality and cute coexist. Because Caden Lane has cracked the code. 
Kate and Kane is a brand that more than uh, just hype, it's more than just hype. With over 70,000 five-star reviews and millions of satisfied customers, experience softness like never before and add personalization that makes Caden Lane the ultimate gift. Don't miss out on their fun bedtime ritual with their Color Me Pajamas, where kids can color their own PJs. You're holding it up right now. I am. Look at this. Well, this is not the PJs, but look at the beautiful. This is for my cousin June. Isn't that beautiful? And it's so soft. Beautiful. And also extra snaps around to make it easy to dress and undress a baby, which is a hassle. Make no mistake. They've got the parents in mind here. They make it easy for you to get them into their Caden Lane outfit. It's wonderful. As I said last time, try it on. Uh, this is the brand you've been waiting for, bringing joy and style to those special moments you'll remember forever. Man, uh, I will tell you this. Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to cadenlane.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 20% off your order. Once again, that's C-A-D-E-N-L-A-N-E dot com slash TMOS. He did try it on. That's yeah, very good. It's a Hit little the thingy there. There yeah. you go. We start today with uh, some celebrities, uh, we were talking about it just a second ago, divide public opinion. BuzzFeed put together a survey of 33 controversial stars and asked fans to vote on whether they're an overall good person. Mm. The options are yes, no, real opinion, uh, and I don't know them. Uh, here are some of the celebrities. <laughs> like how, how much do you like the people that exactly. are taking the top celebrities in the world and saying, I don't know them? I don't know them. Here are some of the celebs and their yes and no scores. Okay. Uh, let me see. All right. All right. So it's, uh, are they a good person? No, yes. And uh, number 10, Howard Stern. Yes, he's a good person, 16%. No, he's not a good person, 62%. Uh, moving on to wow. Anne Hathaway. Uh, does that surprise you, the Howard Stern one? That he they think he's not a good person? Yes. Yeah, because I thought his persona had changed, and he, even the way that he broadcasts had evolved over the yeah, past two decades. Yeah, but I think a, a lot of people are thinking back to uh, previous iterations like America's of Howard. Got Talent, once we saw him there, it was just a different Howard, right? Yeah, well, no one watched that. I think fans <laughs> of Howard might say that still he's on. not a good person, though. That's that true. Still That's enjoy true. Listening yeah. to uh, number nine, Anne Hathaway. For whatever reason, very, very uh, polarizing. Yes. Uh, Anne Hathaway, 82% said yes, she's a good person. 6% said no. Uh, and, and a lot of people say they don't understand the hate. Well, there's not a lot of hate for her. 82% of people say I don't she's like a good her. person. Uh, <laughs> Remember when she got together with the grifter that, that was purchasing, that said he had ties to the Vatican? Oh, she, and she was burned. Yes, yes, that was a yeah. big, that was would have been such a See, bigger story that's right the now. Mark of a vote. bad person right there. Bad Sympathy person. Vote. No. Uh, number eight, Justin Bieber. Fifty one percent say he's a bad guy. Twenty six percent say he's a good guy. Uh, I'd like I to think... meet the people that say he's a <laughs> Mike. Bieber, I don't like Bieber him. Fever. He's bad. Bieber, Bieber. Tom Cruise. Sixty seven percent no rating. I'll just give you the nose. Okay. Instead of uh, the yes, because if they have heavy nose, they have less yeses. Uh, <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres. Seventy eight percent no. Yeah. Not a good person, according to fans. Uh, here's, a, here's a glowing one. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. 83% yes. You've seen him do good things with no, the hands. The Ellen, the, Ellen is a, the Ellen situation is a byproduct of what was proven to be true is the toxic work environment. Yes. Very toxic work environment. Bad press yeah. at the end of her talk show. I yeah. thought they would have spun that into a, like... Hey, we're all good. Life is fine. But no, it took her down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she also didn't handle it well uh, at the beginning. And I think that I think that the toxic work environment, if you are that toxic, you're tone deaf, too. Mm -hmm. There's a little tone deafness that comes into that. I know? just I figure like Porsche would have uh, would have hired the, hot, the like the, the, the highest dollar PR company to come in and say, how do we fix this? She well, can't because this, Porsche's the, locked up at home. After the <laughs> opening of today's show, I'd like to create a more toxic work environment. Uh, number five, so Dwayne the Rock Johnson yeah. gets 83%. Not Amy surprising. Schumer kind of split 45% no, 31% yes. 
Uh, I don't think she's that good, but I like her as a comic. But she's you probably know what not another a good close person. one is here. Will Who? Smith, forty-seven percent no, thirty-five percent yes. People um, still like the Will Smith. Well, now he's got the sympathy vote that we found out that uh, they've been divorced forever, and that, that that entire narrative on on Will Smith has changed ever since Jada came out with her book and said that they've been separated forever. Yeah. Weird. You know what he should do weird. is he should sneak up and slap Anne Hathaway. Then let's see what happens. Here's one they snuck in here. Is Mike O'Mara's studio 13 degrees? (laughs) 98% of people said yes. Do you still have air blowing on you? I have nothing happening. Okay. I can't believe it's that cold. Uh, Here's one up at the top. It's like true detective in there. Yeah. (laughs) This is Alaska. Nicki Minaj. uh, Why is Nicki Minaj at number two? I don't know. Uh, tw- She's irrelevant. Fifty uh, percent said no. Eighteen percent yes. That they don't think Nikki's a good person. Yeah. And Jimmy Fallon, forty-three uh, percent. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon, forty-three percent said he's a good guy. Twenty-four percent said he's no. A, uh, he's horrible. Guy. That he's that maybe w- the worst person in the world. But no, no, you no, recall no. No, he's the. A nice guy. That went away quickly. Mm-hmm. That story about his toxic work environment. Yeah, because he's probably not that way. Ellen was apparent. Ellen was bad to guess. Ellen was horrible to guess many times You're right. on like her the show. She would scare stuff. them all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, weird, weird. It's weird. She uh, stabbed a page. She did. <laughs> not really. Oh. He's lying. Uh, <laughs> back in the news again because I manipulate too. Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> what? Here are some names. Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Drake. They might be disappearing from TikTok. Universal Music Group says it will pull its song catalog today Mm. after failing to come to a fair licensing deal with Tiki Talk. Excuse me. In regards to uh, artists play, pay, protecting artists from AI and online safety for users. Uh, They even posted an open letter. Quote, TikTok proposed paying our artists and songwriters at a rate that is a fraction of the rate that similarly situated major social platforms pay. Ultimately, TikTok is trying to build a music-based business without paying fair value for the music. Universal also added that TikTok currently accounts for about 1% of revenue. So what do you say to that? Oh, they're going to... This is um, that same crawl that we all get once in a while. It's like, better call direct TV because you're going to lose this channel. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I uh, think uh, Universal, Not all, you mentioned those three big artists, but they have a massive catalog because they've, they've absorbed other music businesses. I think they own, I think they own the Beach Boys. I think they own yeah. uh, Elvis. I think they you're own- talking about all, Universal? Yeah, Universal, if yeah. they pull all of their content, TikTok's going to be hurting. So we'll see what happens. No. They're not. You guys, this is wildly... Well, it's not me. Don't the, say guys. Yeah, no, no, no. I was, uh, Rob. All right. A software company is worth more than a music company. Just yeah. bottom line, but, right? Yeah, so they're but, not, not going to be screwed because then what they'll do is they'll sign a check. This is a complete tactic to negotiate, right. Right. and then that'll be it. But, but they I'm, won't be screwed. What I said, I didn't think they would be screwed. I just said it would affect them because that's... More than three artists that you're talking about. Universal is massive. Yeah, Universal so, Music Group? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. The next one, let me uh, hit my uh, little uh, kaboom there. And, uh, you know, when I look at something like that, um, it's like, uh, you know, the rich getting richer and stuff like that. You know, download a song on your iPad and, uh, you know, listen to it and whatever. And Or listen to... Uh, you well, know, we your, have to see service. the artist on tour now for them to make money, this I, is, I think. Yeah, I mean... That's but, true, but, right? I get it. I think artists got to be compensated. It's a yes. different world, and you know that changed with the digital age. Period. End of uh, story. All right, this one cracked me up, and I decided not to read ahead because I just took them bookends, <laughs> and I just read these things because I fell into the category. Then I looked right before we went to air about these, and we have uh, people, three guys here representing different uh, age decades. All right, yeah. we have a forties, we have a fifties, and we have a sixties. Yeah. Uh, this and thirties and yeah. And 30s. With Mac. Mike McIntosh. You know, this uh, uh, not reading the story in advance, this is Lester Holt's method as well. He does that on the news on NBC. He just What's that? doesn't read ahead. That way he's excited about it. So oh, go ahead. Um, well, he I'm doesn't I, he doesn't edit his own copy for news? <laughs> it was a joke. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> Thanks for that. Now let me uh let me get it ramped up again on the best show of my week. Uh how middle aged are you? Uh number fifteen, uh this applied to me and i really think only recently and for the first time and i was so 
friggin' embarrassed. It might be last night or even the night before. Hmm. Uh, you can't find your glasses because they're sitting on top of your head. Oh, I think that happens to more people than we I've think. I've done it very yeah. well. Uh, yeah, it, but yeah. It, but it's even still... sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if you if you're used to wearing sunglasses, yep. like oh, like that that I think that th- this is where I Makes think me maybe this applies. Can I tell you? Yes. When my mom is wearing, my mom is in her mid to late seventies. She has glasses around her neck. Oh, on the chain. Yeah. On the chain, she's got glasses hanging from her V neck or whatever she's mm-hmm. wearing her blouse. Mm-hmm. And then she's got glasses in her pocket, and she says, "Have you seen my glasses?" And I say, "I point to all three. <laughs> she starts giggling and she puts one on. No, uh, but that's that's just that's perhaps, different. That's a different animal. Even worse than that, have you ever looked for the television remote while you're holding the television remote? Oh no, that's dementia. That's okay. Just, that's well, just then dementia. I got dementia. Yes. That sucks, yes. and I can't answer it honestly. <laughs> While you're holding it? That's yes. crazy. I know. Boy, I don't know if that's ever happened to me. Um, I don't know. All I know this is that um, it concerns me when I'm when I'm reading these because I'm on this list. Yes. Uh, we go to number 14. Uh, you still have a landline. Uh, I don't have a landline. Finally got rid of mine. You got rid of yours. Does yeah. it feel weird? It does. Do you, but you don't miss the telemarketer calls, right? Like, mm, yeah. Sometimes, because I like to talk to them. I don't oh, have many it. friends. The woman I'm two decades uh, older than wanted to keep it longer than I did. I left my landline years ago. Years oh, ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, the um, main reason I kept it as long as I did is that in previous incarnations, my cell service in my office was bad. No, the so reason if you I need... kept it is because you fear change and you wanted to keep your landline. Come on, no, tell no, the truth. No, that was the main reason. And then we got it. We got it down, pared down to like a minuscule plan, and it was even through the a, internet. A, a wooden phone on the wall of your home that you cranked, and yes. it was functional. You still would have held on to it. If for you nostalgia. could just be communicated via fax, mm-hmm. yeah. And we had the will to do that. Fax we paper. would do that for you because that would give you yeah. joy. I, I would like that. Yeah. Paper. Yes. Uh, number nice, 13. curly, hot pieces of paper. <laughs> this one I'm uh, interested. I know Rob has. I'm not sure about Oscar. You've dialed a rotary phone. Absolutely. Oh, oh my! That's my. Well, I grew up with a rotary phone. Okay. In my parents. That's it. Uh, you have kitchen. number twelve. Uh, you've taken a keen interest in bunions and corns. I never. Have. I don't know what either of those. No. Still they are, are mm. little things on your on the bottom of your feet, Rob. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I know. No, no okay. interest at all. That's a, that's a drive one, and now I'm frustrated that maybe I should have read ahead. I might not have put it on the show. Uh, number 11, you go into the bank to make a deposit. I've done that. Not I recently. do that all the time I do that. All the time you do that? I don't like – Carrie is big on taking the picture and doing it online. What about online? online? I don't like that. I don't like that. I like that's to old. get a receipt. You're oldie, olderson with that yeah, one. Yeah, You win I like it. on that one. Uh, let's see. You gain weight – uh, that's not no no don't don't f me list what <laughs> no What's i'm not that? reading this it. list is no number oh, 10 read it read it no doesn't Go deserve ahead. it you yeah, gain weight it just by being it. near food f that that's uh, oh, right. so, <laughs> that so is did irma hacky. bombeck write this list <laughs> uh this one falls uh i have one on my arm just the other day oh <laughs> I, I, all right I'll dovetail this because there's not a big story from okay. going to the dermatologist yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you're not quite sure how you got that bruise. So, uh, oh. flash forward to Winslow <laughs> scrapes me, right? Maybe, right. maybe yeah. I still have it. Yeah. No, I really don't have it. I have this, like, purpley bl- uh, bruise, and you see that, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Then I do a, I read, uh, make the mistake of going online to read about yeah. it, and they're also, could be underlying health issues. F you. It's not... I go to the dermatologist yesterday, and uh, I said, uh, I've got this thing uh, right here, uh, and I'm not sure uh, why, why I got it or how I got it. And he goes, I said, is there anything I can do uh, to take care of that? And he says to me, I swear to God, doesn't miss a beat. And he goes, yeah, bubble wrap, uh, which means, like, protect what? your body. When oh. you're exposed, as this <laughs> arm has been more than any part of my body, right. to sun, 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 every mm-hmm. Friggin' day, he said your your skin becomes uh, sensitive. He sort of hit me on the leg. He said, I could do that to your leg. You're not going to get any kind of mark there whatsoever. If I do that to your arm, because of the sensitivity of being in the sun all the time, that's going to react uh, oh, with more wow. sensitivity. That's my... We are now dollars. in full Mac wheelhouse. Yes. Because because it, his Addison's uh, makes him tanned. Okay. Um, yes. Do you right? bruise uh, easy, Mac? Yes. No. 
<laughs> no, that's not all, at no, all. You don't need to say. No. I, I love it when you don't elaborate. I like it <laughs> when you just have the tone of, no. Invariably, you know? when we were broadcasting in New York City, I would wake up with a bruise. <laughs> just, that's a drinking bruise. That was a drinking thing. Yes, I'm, um, I'm in recovery. Uh, Carla falls into this category, and she's uh, she's in her 40s. You yeah. write appointments on a paper calendar. She does, and she manages a lengthy schedule, both online I, and on paper. I, um, I'm looking at one right now in front of me. Oscar, see, you sent Carla your schedule recently, yes. and yes. Uh, and that was online. But do you write it into a paper? No, because it's thing? all on my it's all on my phone. Mm-hmm. I keep a Google calendar yeah. as well, but like for medical appointments and things, I always ask for the sticker. They say, do you still have the sticker that I can put on my calendar? And they do. And so I tape it or paste it to my calendar. I have it right in front of me. So it's kind of writing it down. Similar thing, Yeah, absolutely. But but when I see someone walk in a a boardroom and they've got a a, a thoughtful, usually a classier pad of paper. Like a ledger of sorts. A ledger. I'm like, I I respect it. Uh, I actually don't. I don't judge it. I respect it. uh, Number seven, you're on Facebook, but not Grindr. Oh, that's Well, of course. It's a joke. Uh, number six, you swap ailment stories with your friends. Hi. Yeah. Welcome to where I live. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would I would say two times a month, a uh, lengthy discussion of, well, you know what happened to me. <laughs> it's, uh, I, do, I do that too. It's uh, Well, let me tell you I something. It is, a, it is a numero uno topic of the who, elderly. Who do you talk to? Yeah, exactly. To? Who would you talk about that? Well, it's movie buddy. Uh, actually, not really. Uh, but do you have I, like I will, an Addison's um, <laughs> Ashley group that you call a support group? No, no. Yeah. no, I just I'm obsessed with talking about my ailments. You, it is a big part of your personality. Oh, this <laughs> one's great. Yeah. Next one's great. Number five. I did this uh, during a match. Yeah, uh, you called a 30 year old. In this case, a 37 year old. A kid. I said the I kid. Feel, I just I, I say that the kid yeah. can really hit the ball. That yeah, kid can really I, I, exactly I, I, I said I said I talk I talked that way about Mac. I'm yeah. like, man, he's a good he's a good kid. Uh, this yeah. one I know applies. He runs, to, he digs. Uh, I, I haven't done a lot of word processing in my life. You use uh, you used to fix typos with whiteout. Sure. No. Yeah. It's all I, over I my computer. Why you, it's all why would over you my even computer do such a thing? screen. I may have done it back in the day, like at AU and stuff like that. Yeah, but but yeah. didn't you guys have that little piece of tape that goes like uh, that, that fixes things. Like, yeah, well, they have made. correction tape. Yeah, and yeah, then also, that's... if you're typing, if you go back to the days of a typewriter, some of them had backup erase keys, and also they had little pieces of plastic with white stuff that you could backspace and hit the wrong letter, and it would cover it up. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. yeah. Number but, three, you hmm. uh, you call your children for tech support. I have. I've. I've summoned Michael from his room. I, re- to I received the calls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you received this. See, you're still yeah. not even close. Yeah. Uh, and these two are interchangeable, and I apply to one and not the other. Number two, you can't start a movie past 9 p.m. I can do that easily. Especially okay. if I got downtime hmm. on the weekend, I can Netflix. do it all the time. Yeah. Um, and Forget number one, it. here's what I can't do. You can't, I can't sleep past 9 a.m. I can't sleep past 6 a.m. Most, most is it because your body doesn't let you, or what, what is it? Is it boom, you're up. It's no, the bruises. I, don't. I think that <laughs> it's the bruises. The pain. Wakes I get you up, up early because of my kid all the time, and I don't think yeah. that. But I think I'd get up early anyway. When Carl and I were uh, pre-Michael, you know, we'd roar, get up late, especially now, on the your, your, maybe your parental instinct. I think the elderly get up early, and it has to do with the urinary tract. Yeah, well, I can get, I mean, I can't get through the night, but I can easily go back to bed and, and I re-sleep. can sometimes. I slept till uh, 6 a.m. this morning. I was mm-hmm. able to sleep till uh, Which is a late sleep That's a super yeah. late sleep uh, wow. for me. And uh, forgot to make the coffee. Uh, that's it. Uh, but it so is great when you, uh, you do remember to get up to go to the bathroom. That's huge. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. you don't have to and clean it, up the it, mess. It makes for a much drier morning. It does. Uh, finally, a New Jersey animal shelter's Valentine's Day themed fundraiser <laughs> is drawing a lot of attention thanks to the facility's promise to neuter your ex. Homeward Bound Pet Adoption Center in Blackwood announced on social media that members of the public can make a $50 donation and in exchange they will receive naming rights for one of the feral cats the shelter captures to spay or neuter. Fun! Mm. Mm-hmm. The uh, shelter branded the program "Neuter Your Ex" for Valentine's Day. <laughs> there it is. If you really hate your ex, you can do it. Well, that look—that is that of all the years that we've done 
bro- we've been broadcasting together. And even when I, this is the first time I've ever seen that angle to tie yourself to a holiday. Mm-hmm. So I have to give them creativity. I do too. Points. It's creative. Yeah. Right? And maybe they'll get mm-hmm. some donations yeah. out of it. Yes. You know, uh, the uh, the head of Homeward Bound Pet Adoption Center, Eric Schwartz, said. A board member mentioned that an idea had come through a volunteer about nudie rats. <laughs> that was just trying to make it better than it actually really was. No. So we'll take a break. Uh, yeah. When we come back, I want to talk about a grand, a grand vacation opportunity for each and every one of you. Yes. Let me tell you, if you like more, and what American does not like more, I'd this is more, more, yeah. more, more. Polly Christine, turn up your device because I swear to God. This next story is for you, you, you. And thank you. Uh, All right, everybody. This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by (laughs) the TMOS store in the shadowy depths of TMOS. Hold it, Mike. I have to. uh... Oh. In the shadowy depths of TMOS. Let me start again. Start again. Okay. Stop it and start it again. Yeah, he wanted. Oh, the music again. Okay, I thought you were going to start your copy again. Okay, here we go. In the shadowy depths of TMOS City, a clandestine transformation is unfolding. The TMOS store, once a mere whisper in the night, now finds itself under the control of a new. Okay, I'm tired of these commercials. It's the second one. (laughs) It's like the fifth one, a new mastermind. And she's (laughs) setting the embers ablaze. Social graces, swift deliveries, and a digital symphony of gratitude herald the dawn of a new era. The TMOS store. All right, we're getting a hat soon. The boys like getting letters Mm -hmm. from Carla. They they do. Carla does a little handwriting thing that people seem to be like. There is a serotonin Mm -hmm. like hit. Like I've never seen Boom, the heroes. baby. Seventeen in high school, and the cheerleader wrote him a note. Yeah, it's, it's delightful, and I love it. It's a lo- no it's one else a can big, do that. It's a big payoff for just dotting an I with a heart. Subscribe to the bonus show. Support the store. Get a sticker. Give get us a, a donation. Heart. Any way you want to support yes. this show, you're going to start getting gratitude. And let She's me bring tell you, milkshake right <laughs> to and the oh, yard. You know what? And the person yes. that supports the show the most, yeah, I'll fly her out there. Don't think I won't. Oh, look at that. Oh my. Yeah. Absolutely, Personal appearances. Robert. We got it. We got to negotiate. <laughs> Here's the kicker: the more you chip in, the funnier we are. What do you say, Rob? I say, if you don't buy it, we're not gonna sell it. <laughs> right before, right before I came in here uh, yes. yesterday, I a local story comes across uh, my Fox Four affiliate in Fort Myers, Florida, and. Uh, by the way, I'd be watching the NBC affiliate down here or, or the uh, CBS, but I, I watch the Fox because it's just uh, the voices are more pleasant to the ear. Mm-hmm. There is, uh, you know, and then there's. And to be uh, clear, it's not Fox News; it's your Fox affiliate. It's my yeah. Fox yeah. local affiliate, which yeah, totally that's what can I be do. I like the direction. Fox affiliate. And, and you go off. Yeah, of course. And, uh, the the lady on the t- on channel two, uh, there's one lady I love who's the evening anchor, but the one in the morning has the. Uh, uh, just kind of that sour face where you know she has the downward smile. You know when she, it's just not pleasant to to be there. Does she have a uh, mirthless laughter? I don't think she laughs. What's okay. mirthless? Mirthless I'd is love without that joy. Like if someone were to tell a joke, and you went ha 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 ha. Yeah, mirthless. Mirthless. Uh, I'm gonna try to use that in my real life. I'm gonna ruin it. So. <laughs> <laughs> For one of you, for you cruisers out there, and I, Paul, Polly, I know Polly's a uh, a cruiser. Oh, yeah. Um, for people that like to go on cruises, <laughs> I've yet to go on. One. I hope to go on. One. I love them. Do you really? I. Well, he loves them. I know for sure. But I definitely want to go on. Well, one, I, mean, Shan- I think everybody should probably try one. Yeah. Shannon, it's just it's funny with her her um, ex boyfriend, who a different story is now gone. Yeah. Um, from this the this, this, this mortal coil, um, but <laughs> he's dead. Yes. Oh, different st- different story. Um, mo- moving on. My apologies, uh, Oscar. She, deepest sympathy. No, this was like six, uh, five years ago. And well, I was like, well, at least I don't have to worry about him. Well, he's still um, dead. So, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, <it's> dark. <laughs> wow. I, so, Mike, I'm sorry. That threw me. I did not expect I, that. Wow. I well, because she went on a cruise with this guy. Did so he come for, back? Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. that's terrible. Just a human being we're talking about. Yeah, here. yeah, come on. 
Um, so <laughs> everybody get it together. <laughs> I'll blow on my hands while I'm doing okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. She uh, talks about this cruise sometimes with, with such uh, great, like, just she's reminiscing. I don't know if she's reminiscing about her ex-boyfriend's abs or uh, how wonderful it was. But for me, I've always wanted to go on a cruise look, to, like, supersede I, that one experience. Yeah, no one sure. could do it easier than I could. I can drive 90 oh, minutes. Right I can get in the yeah. car, got a port. and yeah. I can yes. drive yes. to yes. the port. Yes. Literally, yes. directly got a across port. the alley, right. and I can do that. However... Way back when, marriage number one, my mm -hmm. honeymoon, was a cruise. And I was turned off for good uh, on that particular cruise. And I have not gone back. However, I have always uh, flirted with it. The most recent time was uh, we had some uh, wealthy friends that suggested we go on a Disney cruise with our kids. It was so expensive. And in the joy of the moment, we said, yes, yes, yes. And then we realized the logistics of getting from this Alaska cruise back home were just too, That's right. too yeah. tedious and too expensive. So we pulled out of it. And then uh, lo and behold, thank God we did, because if we hadn't, I would be terrified uh, with, the, with the price point that it was. Now, with that said, I have also... Uh, you know, we've had the, the COVID stories. We've had the outbreaks on cruise yeah. ships. And I've read eco almost lie. eco eco. I've read yeah. everything there is to right. read about cruises because they are a very big source of controversy up uh, where I'm from up in Maine. Because they bring these cruise ships into Bar Harbor. And right. they're always. We saw the Vindom up there. The Glitterati up there are yeah. always at war with uh, the cruise ships. whether And also not the glitterati, but the fishing industry too. Yeah. The cruise ships yeah. are, are very difficult for the environment to handle. And so they, they have a lot of controversy around them. But and it's not a big bay. You're like, oh my God. It's kind of nasty. This thing's massive. Yeah. When you think about it. So, uh, I, but I focus really more on the idea of being sandwiched on one of these things with a large group of people, which does not appeal to me in the least. I like to... I like the idea of a vacation being freedom, freedom to go and do what, you want. Do what the hell I want to do. If Got I happen it. to fly to a place, meet some people and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go out and, uh, you know, become a tourista and have my organs harvested because I've made a bad decision. <laughs> at yes. least I had the opportunity to, to make that bad. Decision. It was your choice. It was yes. my choice. Yes. And then when I see a story like this. It might sound what what sounds like spectacular to some people might sound uh, great to you know this wow it's got everything this grossed me out like more than anything we we say hello Rob I think you had the the cruise line the icon of the seas mm -hmm. yeah that is probably is might be I'll look it up I think that might be Royal Caribbean we did th them for our tenth anniversary and then of course the fan club was cool enough when Robert had his anniversary of being cancer free. The fan, the fan base sent us on the Disney uh, cruise. The Disney cruise, which was yeah. insanely wonderful. Just so, remember Rob's motto: if he doesn't have to pay for it, he'll go anywhere. I was I was discussing the Disney cruise, yes. um, Rob, with my, my my wonderful wife. Yeah, where she said, "Why are you bringing a jacket?" And I said, "Oh, I don't like. I don't want to be the guy that showed. We were just going out to dinner." I don't want to be the guy that shows up to this restaurant and doesn't have a jacket just in case because things have gotten very casual. Sure. Mm -hmm. And um, and she's like, that doesn't happen, does it? I said, oh, yeah, Rob didn't have hard shoes on in a Disney Cruise, and he went to a nice dinner on an effing cruise, <laughs> you still and they that. gave him real shoes you to wear to that. dinner yep. because they said, hey, no sandals. Sorry, sir. Brand you new. Still hang on stiff as can be. You are able to retain facts from people's... <laughs> I just... I now I had completely forgotten that that you brought Birkenstocks into the dining yeah. room, right? I look nice, other than the Birkenstocks. No, you don't look nice when you're wearing Birkenstocks. Mike, did you hear what I said? Other yes. than the Birkenstocks, I said I look. And well. what was the exchange again? <laughs> what, what do you mean with the maitre d? Oh, he says um, we don't want to see feet in the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> do you wear those out to a restaurant? I have. I haven't worn them in a while because, you know, but anyway, you don't Mike. You close your toes when you go out to a restaurant? You know, that's really nasty. Depends on the restaurant. Well, what and, restaurant would you wear Burks to? Uh, I would wear Burks to, say, uh, a local favorite around here, the Blue Ridge Grill. 
is yeah. a nice place. J- Jimmy's. Yeah, Jimmy's. I'd wear Burks, you know? too. Uh, Mike, Icon of the Seas I'd is, I think. i throw up if I saw that. The, uh, <laughs> I think it is the flagship of the Royal Caribbean line. So, yeah, Icon of I've the actually, Seas. I've been on yes. this cruise line before. Okay, the ship is divided into eight neighborhoods. I'm this, listening. This fascinates me. Yeah. And, this, by the, and don't let the neighborhood thing fool you. This is the class system. Still exists in cruising mm-hmm. and on ships. This is, these are different classes, but they call them, hey, neighborhoods. Well, that's hey, good marketing. Look at that. Yeah. Well, welcome to the dangerous neighborhood down on <laughs> deck D. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the way. The it, limited uh, oxygen neighborhood. This <laughs> ship has 20 decks. Oh, wow. Wow. Seven it can accommodate 7,600 passengers, six water slides, wow. seven swimming pools, an ice skating rink. Now, bear with me for just a second. What in the depth of your idiocy compels someone to be motivated to go on a tropical cruise because they've got a skating rink? I mean, come I- on feel the same way you feel about the ice skating rink for when I, there's a place in ocean city that used to have an ice skating rink. They may still have one. It's, it used to be the nicest hotel like 20 years ago. Right. And I would say why to myself self, mm-hmm. why the F would anybody go to the beach and skate on the ice? <laughs> mm-hmm. it yeah. make sense. Like I must, I must be missing something. It's like, but it's that desire to have everything. We got everything. Yeah. And I think, on the cheese. <laughs> I think they probably could if they, you know, they refigured it. They could get by with five water slides. <laughs> They've got but a theater. The picture looks fantastic. Yeah. It says one theater. So they've got one theater, which is probably their giant theater where they pack 4,000 people in to see yeah, a show. Yeah, and they bring in a magician. <laughs> All right, here you go. 40 restaurants, bars, and lounges. They now have you're a surf. Talking. They have one of the pools there is a surfing pool. <laughs> oh, what, like one of those wave pools that you can yeah. surf? Yeah, That's I cool. See it. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and the final thing they have, it's a big popular thing where you go, uh, enough poop to construct <laughs> their own <laughs> private island. <laughs> that you got there. That you there it eat. is. God. So uh, icon is the, is the top deck usually the the most luxurious, or is it yes. the the, bo- mm-hmm. the lower deck? Yeah, I don't, the I don't top know deck. how this. In Disney, the they have, and I I put a down payment on this. One, was able to get it back. Thank God. Uh, called the concierge level. Yes, this would have been by several thousand dollars. Yeah, the most Sounds expensive like a twenty thousand dollar vacation. I had ever gone on. I am so crazy. I, I can't even begin to. I would have been in a bad mood. Driving to the airport, there would have been there would have been not. First of all, we're going with someone else, so we're going on there, and they've been on them before. And I would like yeah. so my agenda is not my own, which I can't stand. So I don't travel with people. I, I like can to tell do you my this, Mike: the concierge level has an open bar. I think about eighteen hours a day, and uh, they actually lost money on my cruise because. Did you go to I the had, concierge level? Yes, I was on the concierge level. This it was is amazing. Great. What happened? Was there? this the one they? That, the, well, you didn't pay for it yourself. This is the one they gave you, right? Yeah, the listeners. Paid no for expense. It. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. God bless them. You go up, and there is up, 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 and then you're at the, sort of at the top, but not mm-hmm. like where you're seeing all the water slides and stuff like that. You're yes. almost up like another floor in a you're, tower. You're closest to the fun. Exactly, wow. and then there is a lounge with uh, food put out all day and a bar there that will honor your drinks. Uh, they'll make you a drink. Carrie said, I don't know what I like. And a guy says, let me invent something for you. And he did. He made her a fruity cocktail that she was absolutely in love with. And then you have access to a private. Oh, I deck. know. They made you that famous footerita where they put the umbrella between your toes of your Birkenstocks. When exactly, they you Mike. It was delicious. It was yum, yum. <laughs> yum, good yum. taste of cheese. So a private pool deck. Yeah. So, yeah. That's there was, cool. It was not crowded. All right. I mean, it, was it was a selling point for me at the particular time, you know, being separated. Yeah. Move, but I never, I never went. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're as timely as today's headlines, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Want to go to the Super Bowl? We got a lead for you. Oh. That's right. That's coming up next on the Mike O'Mara Show. Hi, everybody. My little thing today. Oops, it's got frost on. It. My mouse oh. has frost on it. What the hell is going on? It's locking up. I can't believe it. It's like a it. Chicago Tesla. Hey, everybody, I want you to fuel your peak performance with 4Wellness. 4Wellness is the ultimate functional food brand 
for Wellness, founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. This is a supplement you put in your coffee. It's game-changing performance. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop for enhanced focus, reduce caffeine jitters, increase collagen and fat-burning support. But that's not all. Dive into their recovery gummies. They're packed with antioxidants and electrolytes, perfect for pre-workout or post-golf recovery. Need a sweet treat? Try the superfood focus bites that taste like chocolate brownies. So good. Tasty. For Wellness uh, makes quality, functional ingredients into something special for your daily routine. Plus, with risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, with a risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, sorry, uh, what do you got to lose? Unleash your full potential with Four Wellness because your body and mind deserve the best. I want you to head to fourwellness.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 25% off your order. Again, that's fourwellness.com slash TMOS for 25% off. Well, guess who might be going out to the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen? Mm. That's right. Mm. Never misses an opportunity to mm. travel. Oscar Santana, you apparently have a lead on Super Bowl tickets. Well, uh, gentlemen, as you know, we do uh, we do some work with ESPN um, here at uh, Podville and as a team. Uh, we have a friend uh, of the show, Dominique Foxworth, who happens to be an analyst on ESPN. Also has a podcast called The Dominique Foxworth Show. Uh, I was very excited uh, with the probability of the Ravens going to the Super Bowl. Uh, but I was also concerned with the fact that, oh, man, like, I, I love Baltimore as a city. I worked in Baltimore. Yeah. I, I basically lived there for two years. Um, and I just I just couldn't handle all the hay huns if I went to Vegas during that time. Like, it wasn't going to be something fun. So you weren't going to go but, if it was Baltimore? Yeah, it just was going to be too much. Okay. It was going to be too much. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was going to be too expensive because all the flights were, that were going out when I looked at them a month and a half ago right. were just, just expensive from D- the D.C. area to Las Vegas. Were they filled up or were they expensive or both? Both. There would be, if you could get a flight, it was like a middle seat. It was too late. Yeah, the Ravens really, fans had already tough, pre-booked. Tough thing. Then, we all thought the Ravens fans, the Ravens were going to win, correct, mm-hmm. Mike? Yeah, I think they were They were, they were definitely going to yeah. do that. Nikki and Rob, I'll need so. you to do the closing music today because you're, you got uh, it. we got messed up on time today. So That's fine. now that it's uh, San Francisco yeah. and uh, Prices and have Kansas come City. down dramatically for flights to Las Vegas from the D.C. area, which is great news for your boy. Because our friend Dominique Foxworth and Mina Kimes are doing a live show at uh, the Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, a live podcast show of their podcast oh, coming cool. together. Um, on and I and that's something like I was just I wanted to go to support a friend, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I initially looked at it, it was out of um, just budget wise, didn't make any sense. And then when the Ravens didn't make it in. You, I just got all these price alerts from my airlines and Google Flights saying that the flights have come down. So I'm like, all right. You all have been to Super Bowls, correct? I've been to uh, – I've, I've flown to uh, – I've done nine – roughly nine broadcasts at Super mm-hmm. Bowls. But I've probably been to three or four. I've know. never been to the game, but I've flown to at least five of them. Yeah. What was your game time experience? Um, like game day. In the stadium. I'm the wrong guy to ask because it was work for me. And uh, got it, quite got often it. I would go out, do a broadcast on Saturday, uh, on Friday rather, and then beat feet out of town. And yeah. uh, the best But when you were was, uh, yeah. at the game. What was the game experience? Yeah. Same as an NFL game. Uh, Just better, any other game. Better to watch. Well, no, not, the, not another game. Much more pomp and circumstance, but at the same time, still – the view, you know, I mean, I, it's the same thing when I took my kid most recently last year to a Dolphins-Giants game where I prefer uh, to watch the game on TV. I'd fly to Vegas, go to some of the parties out there, uh, yeah. and hang out at a nice casino hotel and then beat feet back. The game itself, w- Rob, would I be uh, wrong in saying it's anticlimactic probably? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And it's, also- it's just a, it's a football game. And it's a, a football, football game, game with... With a better halftime show, but keep in mind, the and limit it game- to what you can experience. It's great to be there, to say you're there, and to be part of the experience. If you are a diehard yes. fan and you've never been, and to be in the stadium when something happens, that's the attraction. As it is for many, many major sporting events, but actually enjoying the contest mm-hmm. visually 
is challenging in the very NFL much more so. than any more than any other sport in uh, in America. You don't the do NFL that. The NFL overall has invented itself as a TV sport. Totally They've, a television. And uh, yeah. the thing is, is they, they put it in I overdrive. I, if you're thinking you're going to see a great Usher halftime show, no. Yeah. Because people on TV are going to see a great Usher TV sh- uh, uh, concert. They're not catering to the people in there. It's anticlimactic. Go out, and also $10,000 for the cheapest ticket? Go Come out. On. Uh, yes. Get yourself. Well, he's got an ESPN connection, so he doesn't. Yeah, have to pay not, for the, the, tickets. the tickets are not. You're the, probably going uh, to a, maybe you could go into a you know a broadcast area and uh, yeah, maybe a, I could just go and be somebody's uh, pretend assistant for assistant. the day and walk around. Yeah, yeah. if you can, and you, you, I mean, as opposed, I, well, if you're doing it that way, that's different too. If you're going to have access, then it's a totally different. By the way, I've had that too uh, for mm-hmm. NFL games where I've had on-field access. And I have too. Nothing yeah. like it. We had the Redskins for a while, so it was a very, very special thing to do. And I also had John Riggins who got me on-field passes back before we were <laughs> That's WJFK awesome. and all that. Mr. O'Mara, Mr. O'Mara, I can get him or something. Uh, but I will tell you this. That if you can go out there and you don't want to, that, the game is a hassle. But the most, the biggest hassle, the biggest hassle, the airport, if you are oh, in, is it McCarran? Is that McCarran Airport? Yes. If Correct. you're in McCarran right. on uh, Monday, FML, you, you get ready for that. It's better to do the experience. Go knock yourself out on Saturday. Get yourself mm-hmm. a nice little flight, little red eye flight out on Saturday. Back in your living room. Uh, and only Sunday. on Sunday, yeah. that's what yeah. I would do. But then again, if you've never been, I also think it's something you should check I'm, off your bucket list. I'm, I'm more th- – what's funny is because the, the Friday the 8th is the show. Uh, they don't need our help. Uh, but I'm more curious to see how they do a live show. And then Have they done I am live in, shows before? I am interested in gallivanting. Gallivanting around right. Vegas. There's yeah, a lot of yes. – you know what? It's better. With the best Foxworth. Gall- the best gallivanting we ever did, Mike, was New Orleans. Yes. That's a great town for a Super Bowl. Uh, Vegas, fabulous. I can only imagine. Yeah. The, the gallivanting. partying and everything around it, uh, except for the cherished commissioner's party, which we overblew in our minds and turned out to be crap. It sounds like it's big time. It's big time if you like to go in a uh, warehouse with 8,000 of your best friends and stand mm. in line for drinks and food uh, on a convention concrete floor. It's the bomb. No, the best one was Tampa. Where we went to the Maxim Mag, did you go to the Maxim Magazine? No, I, that uh, was that predated me, Mike. Uh, Maxim sadly. Magazine party. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. And I had a standard line. Oh my God, I was in my swinging D period of my life. I forgot what I. I walk up to. I I had enough cocktails. I was walking up to absolute goddesses, and uh, I said, uh, I I forgot what the line was, but it was a standard line. I said, uh, you don't remember me, or something like that. That's what. <laughs> I was that confident. Don't, don't you know who I am? No, it was like, you don't remember me, but uh, I'm Mike O'Meara, and I wouldn't say anything else. <laughs> and they're like, you get this weird look, and it was uh, it was great time. Yeah. So gallivanting, I'm all yeah. for. That's the way yes. I look at that. You, you know, were approaching you models, and I was told to approach Andy Rooney and Jerry Jones. That's what I did. <laughs> and why don't you give the line uh, when we were doing the broadcast in the lobby of the hotel. Uh, yeah. What did Andy Rooney uh, say when you asked him to come on the Don and Mike show for an interview? Nah, too many. Too many. <laughs> Wandered off. That's it. Uh, we got to get out of here, ladies too and gentlemen. Many. We'll be back with a brand oh, new are episode. You gonna, Mike, we missed a, we missed a spot. We oh, didn't we do, do have flip. the flip side. Yeah, we do. What yeah. did I miss? Hold on. All right, I'm sorry. You just sorry. We ran long. You missed uh, You missed the Derm Glow spot and all that. No, I did. The, oh, oh, I missed the Derm Glow spot. Okay, we'll be right back. Sorry. <laughs> we missed everything. <laughs> I'll end the no, show with no, a spot. Fine. The whole schmear. Yeah. All right. Uh, this show has been brought to you by. I've got tmosstore.com. Now I'm going up to the we top. We did that. To yeah, see it was that. Caden, Dermblow. Yeah. Dermblow is the second spot. I just Sorry. thought you had moved it mentally. No. Uh, do you want to lose 21% of your weight? Go to dermblowskin.com. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow <laughs> for a brand new episode. So long, everybody. All right. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Sometimes it is a big dick competition.